During the second freeze of the left inferior pulmonary vein, Dr. Su gets pre-ablation signals of the right inferior pulmonary vein. So I'm going to mark the inferior first, so we can guide the ablation into the inferior. Inferior in him actually is just what the 3D looks like. It's a tiny vein, which in this case may be very challenging because we have a big balloon. Dr. Su completes the left inferior pulmonary vein ablation and moves to the right inferior pulmonary vein. Well, let's fold it. So who we withdraw the balloon into the sheath, be careful about how we're doing it too. If you can, straighten out the sheath a little bit so we're not trying to pull it back when it's massively bent. And it should pull back just like that without too much force. You have to really pull that back with significant force, just refold the balloon. So going to the right side, this one, a little clockwise work. So LAO, I know I'm toward the right side. Just come to RAO and we'll make sure this is pointing posteriorly. So on the right side, we have to pull the balloon past the bent on the sheath. Let's focus on that. And the balloon is all the way back. And this is going to go forward. And that's the right inferior vein. We'll attract the balloon over wire. Dr. Sue is now advancing the balloon over the wire into the right inferior pulmonary vein. And balloon back up. All right, so that's where that is balloon is inflated. So let's go to the LAO again. Let's see how the alignment of the sheath with the balloon is. So you can get an idea. So again, if I'm clocked it one way or the other, you can see how this is pulling the balloon in and out of that corner there. So pushing it in and out, and actually can change the angle quite a bit. Let's come back to the RAO. So the easiest way really is just shoot a venogram and see where the leak is. And it's very difficult for a large balloon to cover a small ostium, so I know this is going to leak. But we will need to see where the leak is. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. Sydney? All right, so as I see inferior leak, I'm going to pull that down and see, all right, I'm covering most of it that way. So let's play that again. Part of it, I'm looking for other branches to see if there's any other great targets. Great. So you can see I pulled the balloon down there to try to create a better seal to see where things are. So here I know if I have come on ablation here, this will be ablating near the ostium, uh, the carina area, which is fine. We can keep in mind on where our ablation is at and then we can see what other angle we can go at. So let's see, make sure we haven't changed our angle and then come on ablation. Remember to pace the phrenic nerve at a level above the ablation site when ablating the right sided veins. So. I can actually feel the uh, phrenic even where I'm holding the catheter, so I should be keeping in mind a uh, uh, very watchful eye on the phrenic nerve. If the phrenic nerve is too loose, the right thing to do is to come off ablation right away because you can always come back on. Good, so we have good phrenic capture. So this is a, a balloon and vein really a mismatch situation, it's okay. which it's okay. So I can actually feel the uh, phrenic even where I'm holding the catheter, so I should be keeping in mind a uh, you know, very watchful eye on the phrenic nerve. If the phrenic nerve is too loose, the right thing to do is to come off ablation right away because you can always come back on. Dr. Sue completed a freeze-thaw freeze in the right inferior pulmonary vein and moves to the right superior pulmonary vein. Blown up. That's inside the vein. All right, that should be seated there. Let's shoot a venogram and see what we have. Ready? Yep. All right. Shoot one. So if you're late there, I'm going to take that and see. All right. So I quickly moved the balloon down because I know I have the inferior leak, so I can highlight where that is and I'm going to study to see if it's a better angle to look through this in. Alright, so this actually has a fairly good intake into the 
area. I actually want to have a more dramatic bend on here to make it more coaxial. How about if we do this? I'll shoot the contrast again, see what this does. Ready. Alright. That's better. Alright. That's a blade. So, I'm going to allow probably a good 30 seconds for the balloon to adhere, sometimes a little bit longer before I start pacing. Otherwise, that may, the pacing motion itself may dislodge my balloon position. Dr. Su completes the first ablation of the right superior pulmonary vein and repositions the wire for a better coaxial alignment for the second freeze. Looks like this right there. Yep, there we go. That looks like a better coaxial point for the balloon. So that's better. Since our spiral was frozen well there, we'll take that out. And what's inside a spiral, actually, it's all isolated. Update review, we can make a note the LA12 is outside the vein, and what's inside is actually pretty well isolated on the inferior. So that helped us clean up quite a bit. Left superior pulmonary vein is completely isolated here. Looks great. So left side of veins are very well isolated. Good. Let's go back to our right superior vein. Let's have our balloon up. Yep. So that's inside the vein. That's outside the vein. Good. Should the venogram there? Yep. Ready. All right. Go for it. So oh, that's yeah. much better coaxial location, so that's a good choice for our branch that we saw. That's the blade. Let me take another look, make sure it didn't move. We still see contrast there, so I know we're occluded. Dr. Sue completed the second freeze of the right superior pulmonary vein. It's taking about a minute to fall out. Great. No PACs. Excellent. It hasn't had a PAC in a long time. Yeah. We had a lot of PAC to start with. Maybe some of them were from the TVs and we have not seen that for a while. The so balloon is back in the sheath. I want to take that over to the center part of the left atria. So that doesn't get it in the way of my spiral. I'm going to try to check it. Superior, again inside the spiral is good. Right superior, the stretch out the spiral, that's completely actually inside. Beautiful. And I think we're done with the pulmonary vein isolation. We can pull the catheter down, we get our basic EPs recording. Let's do some induction. Isopril, uh, we'll start at four. Pressure is on the lower side, so we'll. Go gentle on him for now. So one thing that's helpful is that since my balloon is on the uh, sheath, we will have a timer that starts right away. Because we don't want to have our folded balloon inside the sheath longer than the ACT. So since I'm done with the balloon essentially, veins are isolated, I'm gonna take it out. Make sure we flush out the sheet. Beautiful. Away. All right, lung is out. Total procedure time, 90 minutes. Fluoro time, five minutes. Left atrial dwell time, less than 60 minutes. Patient follow-up, no AF recurrences. Off amiodarone, feels great and has not suffered any symptoms since the ablation.